All right, here we go. Another episode of Canada on the Rocks. I am your host, local realtor here in Ottawa, Fadi Kudair with Sutton Ottawa. Today, we're hosting somebody here that I've known for a little over 15 years. Kind of funny story how we met, actually, but I'll tell you a little bit once we introduce him. Brian Johnson from BPA. How are you, sir? I'm good, man. Thanks for having me in. I appreciate it. Looks- really appreciate you're making the time for us today. I know you've got a very busy schedule. I think we've tried to do this probably for three or four times at least. I think it's three. Yeah. Yeah. So... Here we are. You're back from vacation. How are things? Yeah, actually, I haven't been on vacation in a little while, but things are good. Things are progressing really well. We actually, uh, you know, the company I work for uh, or I have worked for for 28 years, we have officially rebranded. We're about whatever it is, 16 days old now in terms of our rebranding from uh, what we were, Cleveland Jardine Engineering, to fully BPA. So it's uh, been nice. It's been a really great, uh, great process over the last year. Fantastic. So it's rebranding, but with still a lot of history coming up, 28 years. You guys have been, my understanding is your location, your head office is in Canada. Tell me a little bit more about BPA in general. Tell so me the story. where we came from, where we started from was back in 93, senior partners, uh, Mike Cleland, Bob Jardine, set up a little little shop of fundamentally three people. And then within, by the time we got to our, our 30th anniversary, we had, you know, 65 people, full structural engineering services, building science. So we were able to basically handle anything from, from of any size and scope, plus renovation, retrofits of any kind of existing buildings, commercial, residential, you name it, we're able to do it. Pinnacle of, I guess, what our achievements was over that time is that we are now co-leading the structural engineering for the new civic hospital right now. So, Oh, wow. That's a... Yeah. Very big project for sure. Yeah. We, we jumped from, uh, you know, we used to be able to put on our resume that was, you know, projects, you know, up to, you know, 200 plus million dollars. Now I get to put it on, on the resume going projects up to, you know, somewhere. Amazing. It's pretty impressive. But and the Civic Hospital is like an iconic building within Ottawa, right? Like it's just, yeah. It goes to show that you guys are putting your mark on. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, I spent close to 20 plus years doing healthcare work. So I kind of see it at that summit of like, mm-hmm. wow, I, I put in all these years and now I get to work easy to do a, a major, major landmark. It's going to be a building. Who knows? Hundred. I mean, the original Civic is almost 100 years old. But last year we made the decision that we were, you know, we we're looking at, you know, what's our next steps? You know, where do we go from 65? Pre-COVID, we had started making some headway into some various areas. We were going with some clients to various parts of the, the country's coast. Uh, we've done some work in the West Coast, but we were starting to look strategically like what's, where's the next place to go? Yeah. The executive VP from BPA. I've known him. We were literally on the ninth hole of Natalie's Lakes golf course back when you were, well, that was pretty much the only thing you could do yeah. was stand outside, talk to it or COVID. And then he just said, Hey, what about the possibility of making this happen again? Let's talk a little bit more through the process. And then April, it was funny. I went to, uh, I, I joke around that I woke up on March 31st as Brian Johnson, partner of you know, partner and manager of the new construction department of Cleveland Jardine. And then I got a call at five o'clock from the CEO and he was like, Brian deal's done. Congratulations. Welcome to becoming vice president structural of, of BPA. That was pretty cool. But uh, BPA has been around for about 60 years. Part of our evolution and in, in growing, they have all this mechanical, electrical, structural, they have sustainability division and modeling. Uh, so they're really, they got a really big broadband of skill sets and they're Canadian. Owned. That's, that's beautiful. They're, uh, they're also owned by all the shareholders. So private, private company, we don't answer to some giant entity that's somewhere in, yeah. somewhere in space that we, we answer to ourselves. Very, there's a lot of, but different personalities that are going to help grow. We actually just had our strategic planning meeting to set up the next Friday. Very exciting to see. We, got, we officially crossed thousand people. So we're at a thousand and two officially now. Wow. Yeah. Uh, with offices. I think there's seven offices in the back region, Halifax. Uh, we have an office in Toronto now, three offices in the Ottawa area, Edmonton. Fantastic. So what led to the merger? I think the biggest thing is, like I said, we sat back and we started examining about what are, how do we start to grow or, or do we start to grow or how do we start to grow as a single? And we realized that the infrastructure we were going to need to help that happen, mm-hmm. you know, was, was going to take a big investment, right? Yeah. You're at that threshold when you're sitting at 65. Do you go, it, it's hard to just go 65 to 64 to 66 to 67. And uh, you're starting to now get into those numbers where if you really want to get that much more ingrained in multiple markets, you got to go from 65 to like a hundred or you got to go to 65 to 80. And like, yeah. so that became a little bit challenging. We also noticed that there was more and more companies shifting towards that multi-service. I mean, we still offer everything separately, but together, but we noticed it was 
there was more of that out there. So mm -hmm. that was becoming a little bit more challenging. There's definitely a change in the industry. There's more of these, more of the companies like <laughs> us, the independents that have now uh, been brought into these kind of larger groups, yeah. not necessarily the giant WS. So just for the folks watching, because I, I like to sometimes kind of dial it back a little bit and mm -hmm. give them a bit of an understanding of what the topic that we're talking about, and especially because we're talking about businesses around Ottawa, mm -hmm. specifically. When you say multidiscipline, yep. could we shed a little bit of light on the engineering background and the multidiscipline and what that means? That's the exciting part. That's where we get really, you want me to get really nerdy? That's exactly, or <laughs> that's exactly what I'm looking for, Brian. Right, okay. The nerdy part, everybody's like, wow, this is the exciting stuff. Multidiscipline basically is, I mean, you could look at it as kind of, there's three, if you look at building design, building construction, building maintenance, there's the primary, you know, the, the three pillars or the three triangle, mm -hmm. it's mechanical. If you just look at the building itself, uh, excluding the architectural, there's basically, you know, your primary mechanical, which is basically looking after all your systems, whether it's H, uh, heating, ventilation, air conditioning, then you've got uh, plumbing, fire protection, the majority of it. And then you've got the, the electrical side, which of course is fairly straightforward. I mean, mm -hmm. Everybody's talking about, you got to have lighting, you got to have power, you got to have the generators. Structural is the stuff that nobody ever gets to see because half the time we wrap it in drywall. I mean, we didn't even tell you what the structure actually is, is ceilings. But those are fundamentally, you know, the three key components of, of building engineering. Now you, you surround that with architecture. Like we could we could go on and on regarding envelope design, which is, you know, your cladding, your exterior walls, then there's the architectural, then there's the, you know, there's so many other aspects to it. Energy modeling now is a big thing because of the sustainability requirements mm -hmm. that are that are not only here now, but coming. So where would it fall for energy modeling? Is that under electrical, structural? It's it's mostly under the mechanical, mechanical. side. So the energy modeling is, uh, I, well, I guess it's a combination of mechanical, electrical. It's it's mostly about examining how the building consumes its energy, mm -hmm. and you know the creation of something like net zero, where basically you're not necessarily pulling, you're not necessarily pushing, but you're you're fundamentally creating a building that is is about as energy efficient as you can possibly make it. But that energy modeling then brings in all of the other aspects so it's the electric what electrical systems are you using you know what methodologies are you using for heating and cooling how does the envelope perform because mm -hmm. the envelope becomes a big part of how does the building leak energy you know uh, st structural even becomes part of that because how does the structure you know transmit some of the heat or the the the, the heat losses or the or the cold through the building through yeah. the envelope so it's, it becomes a very very i guess a global integrated solution that you have to do there is no one piece where you just say okay we're going to put in this type of unit and that solves all the energy problems yeah. it's how does the you know you start from the outside and you work your way all the way and onto the inside so fascinating very fascinating stuff and, and engineering for me is, is always at the end of the day like what we do is real estate right yep. real estate means nothing unless you're able to build and flourish mm -hmm. you know it's one thing to just have a piece of land somewhere. We're, we're, we're not back in the, in the 1600, 1500 where we could live in like tents and stuff. We do need to have some structure, some sort of buildings to go in. And that's where you guys come in to yep. do all of that. So I just want to kind of get back into that merger. Mm -hmm. Tell me the story about like, obviously we we kind of discovered how it came to fruition. Yep. But how is that going for you guys as far as restructuring and getting things in, in line and all of that? I mean, so basically we've gone through about one year what, we, what we've been looking at as being the integration process. Mm -hmm. It's actually been really good. We've had the, we were, we were probably their biggest acquisition at, at the time. Uh, there's been a few more since then. So there was, there was some learning curve to it, but they made a lot of, or we, so, I mean, I, I actually gotten pretty good at it because I've, I'm, I've been BPA longer than anybody in terms of how I present myself to various markets. But, you know, we brought in a, an integration specialist meetings. There was some direct involvement from a lot of high, higher ups, so you want to call it in the company. It wasn't just, okay, we, we left it to a certain level. Everybody was in there. I think IT was the biggest one, obviously, because, yeah. you know, our infrastructure was pretty good. Their infrastructure is pretty good. Actually, yeah, their infrastructure is excellent. Our infrastructure now is excellent, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's one of those ones where you, you got the best intentions for IT, but everybody knows IT never goes right. And no, there's no. And IT something. is like this revolving sort of, you, you always have to keep enhancing it. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, like there's folks out there that are doing whatever they can to get into, yeah. penetrate walls and do all of that stuff. So how did that go about, you know, putting it all together? How long did it take for you guys to get where you're at today? 
So it basically took the full year. The full yeah. year. Yeah. But, uh, and it, it was just, it was just process of just kind of eating it away. Right. Like there's little things like, okay, where do we start? Where do we prioritize? What are the things we look at first? Obviously the, uh, the staff is a huge, huge part of that. Right. You have to go through that very, very carefully because they have to get used to a new methodology. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's not only just the leadership has to get used to a new methodology, but it's all the people that we work alongside that. And they're, I mean, ultimately what we do, is while well, yes, there is engineering, obviously there's math, there's science and all that other stuff, but fundamentally it's people. And they're the most important aspects of anything that we do. Uh, without without the people that we work with, we are we can't do anything we can do. So yeah, Absolutely. I mean, at the end of the day, it's people are what makes company. Like a company is, is no longer a company if you start taking people out. Exactly. Um, with that being said, Brian, as VP of Structural, what are your counterparts look like? What's, you know, other sort of, I want to say titles or what have you in the company that kind of, represent the same sort of model of engineering? Well, I mean, there's, you know, VP mechanical, VP electrical. Mm-hmm. There's also some subsets to it, some like VP institutional as well. But basically our our role is, is just basically, I guess, overseeing the development of that practice in Canada right now. So that's one of the mandates that I have is, is to start expanding, streamlining the structures that we have. Uh, integrating us more because our Montreal office has 45 and then we have another group in Saguenay that has 15. Now that we have a physical office in Toronto, the next objective is to get structures there, which I'm working on now. And then over the next, we'll see how quickly we can do it. But I know Halifax is really, they want us to put the structures there. Edmonton is really wanting us to put the structures there. Mm -hmm. So fundamentally, that's what I'm basically going to be doing over the next few years. So with that sort of in mind, are you guys looking at for, for each different office to have a, a, a segment of each kind of department within the company or is it more holistically? So the, the, the I guess if we want to break it down into the simplest forms, in each office, we want to make sure we have the three pillars, right? Mm-hmm. Structural, mechanical, electrical. Now, the size of each one of those sectors in those offices is going to depend on the market. Yeah, It's going to depend on also how they can be supported and the level of expertise we can put in. It doesn't necessarily mean that every office, you know, like our Montreal has, I think, 200 and some people in it. That doesn't mean every office has to have 200 people. What it means is that we need to have a certain amount of people in each office that can service their their markets, but also be supported by our other groups. So, I mean, a great example is we have, we have kitchen design, you know, everybody's and, and people get, I, I get a kick out of it because, you know, we go through, I so, say, well, we got mechanical, we got electrical, we got structural, we got energy modeling and fire protection. I go, oh yeah, we got kitchen design. And the number of people, you guys have kitchen design? Do you know how many few people do kitchen design in Canada? I'm like, but we're not necessarily going to put a kitchen design expert into every office. We mm-hmm. might, but we have the ability to have them supported. Like there's a, there's a direct tie-in to mechanical, electrical. There's a, we have the ability now to have localized expertise, but have them supported by by the teams in the other areas. Yeah. So it's, it becomes, it, it, it's very good for me. So for example, like when we were on the, you know, we're on the Ottawa Civic and one of the things is like, it's a massive project and, you know, staffing is always a channel. We know the labor market right now. It's we very, are, very tough. Yeah. We very are short tough. people everywhere. Yeah. So now instead of having me having to look out and go, okay, well, how do I grab people? I just added 45 people. So now I can share resources and I can add people more, more easily to what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. So it's, it, that is, that has been a huge thing for us is that just that confidence to know that we've got the ability to, to, to grab other people and get support. So. Yeah. For the folks watching, what goes into a project as far as the involvement of all the different sort of segments of engineering, as well as structure, as well mm-hmm. as design, all of that, like, just tell us a story about sort of one of the projects you guys have done that could maybe sum this up a little bit. Oh, that's an interesting question, actually. I mean, fundamentally, any every project's a little bit different, but if you if you go down to the again to the the basics, I mean, there's every project needs like if we just look at a brand new building, like you're in you're in commercial real estate, you're in residential, it doesn't really matter. Like that building starts with obviously an owner wanting to build something. Yeah. But then you're getting you have to involve, you know, obviously you got the planners who help you get the building planned and get the, get the site plans that, yeah. approved. And then you get into the design of the building itself, which is oftentimes led by the architect, uh, then mechanically structural, electrical all come into play there. And essentially it's an integrated style design where you, you know, everybody feeds into the global view and, and creates the building. So architecturally, if you look at it, 
simply, I mean, you'll start off with, you know, a schematic design where the architects basically worked out the programming and the user needs, generally what the building looks like. And then we will come in structurally and go, okay, this is what you have to do to make that, to support that building. And then mechanically, electrically, they're coming in saying, okay, this is what we have to do to feed it, to make sure that it, mm -hmm. it, it operates the right way. So kind of know this a little bit about my history. I grew yep. up in an engineering office. My dad is an architect. And I used to see those stories all the time where like the engineers, especially like when it comes to the architect and the structure, kind of going head to head. How does that work nowadays? As far as, because, you know, in all rights, like you know, the architect wants a certain design, the yep. structural might not be able to support it. How are you guys are solving the, those issues? It's funny. I just I was just at Carlton U, or yeah, I was Carlton U a couple of weeks ago, and one of my uh, one of the architects that we do a lot of work with, she asked me to come in and just give a brief overview presentation on how structures and architects can interact, and the stories you talk about yeah, about the the butting heads. It's part of that is a personality thing. It's mm -hmm. you know I can't remember the exact science, but say engineers are right brain thinkers and architects are left brain thinkers. Yeah. So it, it, but it comes down to, to me, really, really good architects and really, really good engineers are the ones that have a little bit of the other side in them. And also understanding that everybody's trying to achieve success on the project. So me having the ability or, or the people I work with having the ability to listen to what they're after, yeah. right? Because ultimately they want to do the best for the project. They want to get something built. So our job is to help them build that. Mm -hmm. Our job is to help them realize that vision. So walking into a room and just saying no all the time, first of all, it's, it's of no benefit to the project and it's no benefit to your relationship that you're trying to yeah. build. So I think it's important to, to avoid some of that is that whenever you are on a project, you build up a personal relationship with the people on it so that they can begin to not only trust what you're, trust you, but trust what you're saying. And trust that what when you're saying is you're looking after their own interest plus your own interest, right? Because if everybody walks in a room is like, I'm just looking after my structural and I'm just looking after my mechanical, I'm looking yeah. after my electrical, and I'm looking after my architectural, you're not gonna get anywhere. You've gotta you've gotta put your faith in each other and and listen to each other too. Sit in the room and listen to the architect. And the architect needs to sit in the room and listen to the structural. Have an explanation of the why. Don't just say no. I, I oftentimes you know, talk to our younger engineers is that our objective is to pass along that information so that they can make a, a decision, but you need to do it in a way that you explain it to them so that they can understand. You walking into a room and saying to the architect, well, I can't do this. And they say, please explain to me why. Well, the moment and the shear and the, the, the math says this, and they're just like, I don't even know what that means. So some of them might because they've done some engineering background, but talk to them in a language regarding, oh, by the way, it's going to bend too much rather than saying the moment is too high. So, and this is the impact on your floor system that you're going to have. You're going to have more vibration or you're going to have something that's not flat enough. Mm -hmm. So it's always interesting. It's very interesting to see that dynamic, especially when you're looking at massive projects, you know, mm -hmm. like a massive 20 story, 30 story building kind of thing. Or a massive $3 billion hospital. <laughs> exactly. It's just yeah. everybody wants their their say, mm -hmm. but in the same token, like you said, we do have two years instead of for a reason. With that being said, tell me about one of the most interesting projects you guys have ever worked on here in the city. Oh, wow. If I look at it on a personal side, I don't know how interesting the building is, but in terms of the the thing, these things that that touch you to the point where you realize your impact mm -hmm. on lives. I've tried to explain to some of our, our younger engineers, like find a passion in everything that you do. Like every project matters. Yeah. And the reason why it matters is because every building you build, someone is going, you, you've helped someone achieve something. Like if you're an owner or developer, you've helped them achieve something that they were after. If you're the person that moves into that house or the, the small shop, even the smallest shop that goes into a retail strip mall, that's somebody's dream right there. Like I'm, that I'm doing something. Yeah. So when you, when you walk into a room and you start saying, well, I'm only working on this, you know, he's, he or she, or they are working on a, you know, 30 story building and I'm working on a two story house. And I'm like, yeah, but think about that. That two story house is going to have a family of four, or three or two living in it. There's going to be children that are going to be raised in that house. People are going to make their dreams happen. And part of this is because, so I try to get that, personal connection to people to understand that you know sort of amalgamation with the new company we'll get a new sign up in the next in the next yeah. two or three months the we'll sign, sign will up. be up yeah. Yeah. that's the fantastic one, check it out it's yeah. on palladium yeah again brian thank you so much for being a part of the show being on here Appreciate on uh, canada on the rocks and guys if you like what you see please don't forget to hit the like button 
And for more episodes like this, and you want to see more businesses around the city that are contributing and bringing massive, massive change to the city, just let us know. Uh, put it in the uh, comment and don't forget to subscribe so you can get more of these sort of things coming up. And we know exactly what you, know, what you like and, and what have you, and we can keep go doing what we're doing. Thanks again. Really appreciate it and have a great day.